Equality. A certain rule, ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honour your father and mother. All these things I've kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Grown up in Wales, we would be reminded every week by our maths teacher that it was a Welshman, Robert Record from Temby in Pembrokeshire, who invented the equal sign. Only a year later, he was arrested for debt and died in prison in Southwark in 1558 at only 46 years old. Maybe this Welsh link was part of why I grew up to love maths in school. There was especially a satisfaction in seeing the equal sign with the correct number on the other side of it and of course a big tick next to it. But if that equal sign was incorrect, if one side of the sum did not equal the other side, then that was frustrating and unsatisfying. Today's passage challenges us to consider equality and how we react to inequality in our society. Do we just ignore the huge inequality between rich and poor in our society? Or are we uncomfortable and frustrated, appalled even, when we look at people's lives and see that the sums of economic wealth do not equal each other? According to Barack Obama, inequality is the defining issue of our time. There was actually a decline of poverty and inequality after World War II, but this soon began to change and in recent years poverty in the UK has been almost three percentage points higher than it was when the Child Poverty Action Group was formed in 1965. From the 1980s onwards, the gap between those with the greatest wealth and those with the least grew wider and wider. By today, Hierarchies that were accepted only a generation ago are now thankfully denounced. Divisions between gender, race and sexuality. A hierarchy of rich and poor, though, is seen as perfectly acceptable and to some even sensible. As Christians, we need to ask how Jesus might view the present situation. Today's passage is a huge challenge to us all. Perhaps, like the rich man in the story, there is one thing we lack – if we take seriously Jesus' talk of the kingdom of God, then we need to reassess our society's obsession with money. And we must take seriously the needs, cares and concerns of others, not merely our own. After all, in the Gospels, the kingdom of love is a kingdom of parity and equality, as many of Jesus' parables demonstrate, not least the parable of the workers in the vineyard. Even in worldly terms, research shows that a move towards equality improves society generally. Countries with better social and economic equality see a higher quality of well-being, socially and individually, than more unequal countries. In other words, a more equal society sees everyone's life improving, both rich and poor. Crime, ill health, obesity, depression and anxiety are all lowering countries where the equality gaps are smallest, irrespective of overall wealth. The truth is, wrote Richard Wilkinson and Kate Pickett in their book, The Spirit Level, Why Equality is Better for Everyone, is that both the broken society and the broken economy resulted from the growth of inequality. In our passage today, Jesus challenges a young man to replace the kingdom of Mammon in his life with the kingdom of God. This is such a difficult step to take that both the young man himself and countless others down the centuries have failed to live out his call. In fact, historically, scholars 
have, whether consciously or not, even watered down Jesus' revolutionary challenge. It has long been claimed that the eye of the needle was a narrow gateway in Jerusalem that camels had to unload their goods in order to pass through, just as a rich man has to unload his material possessions. Recently, though, scholars have questioned the existence of such a gate. The interpretation now is that in Aramaic, the word gamla probably means thick rope rather than camel. And so Jesus is saying that it is easier for a thick rope to get through the Iver needle than for excessive and unequal wealth to have anything to do with the kingdom of God. In other words, for money to be part of God's kingdom is almost an impossibility. There is something profoundly radical about this attitude to wealth. It is a challenge to us all. Jesus knew something that sometimes we just don't want to face. Wealth is not the way to peace of heart, to a healthy and happy society, nor to a peaceful world. In 1988, as our society was beginning the journey to its present inequality, the Church of England bishops met with the government to express their concerns. And so economic freedom was absolutely essential as it relates directly to our individual liberty. The normally reserved Bishop Michael Bourne of Chester then cut through the discussion. I'm afraid you misunderstand, Prime Minister, he said. Christianity, Christianity is not about freedom, it's about love. Equality is at the very heart of Christian love. Reflection. The Trussell Trust, which works with people of all faiths and none, is an anti-poverty charity founded on Christian principles. It opened the first food bank in the UK in 2000 and now supports a network of food banks providing emergency food for those in crisis. The charity considers its founding verse to be Jesus' words in Matthew 25, 35, For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. Take some food to your local food bank collection point. Alternatively, find out about volunteering in your local food bank or explore the Trust or Trust website and consider donating money to the charity. Finally, take some time in prayer to ask God for a society where food banks are unnecessary. <laughs>